Hello everyone, uh, this is Brock Skaggs and I'm going to make this video talking about collections inside of VBA. And so collections are just another data structure that we can use to store data in memory uh, while we're working through our program. And so we've looked at things like arrays, dictionaries, here's just another tool in your tool belt uh, to help you accomplish some task. And so a simple example would be like ID numbers. I could have a um, a collection of PSU ID numbers that are in that are reflecting students in a given class. Um, also, if you kind of look at Excel, the architecture behind it, um, there's a lot of collections being used there. Uh, for instance, um, the Excel application, um, the current session of Excel, if you will, has a collection of workbooks that represents all the present workbooks um, that are open in that session. Each one of those workbooks has a collection of sheets, um, which are all the worksheets in the um, worksheet, or excuse me, which is a collection of sheets, which are all the worksheets in the workbook, and then there is, in each one of those sheets, a collection of cells, which represent all the range objects for the individual cells um, in the worksheet, and so range objects being in there being either one cell or a range object can actually refer to a grouping of cells as well. And so this idea of collections is pretty common. Um, as far as VB collections, you have to remember that they are one base, so their lowest index is one, not zero. Uh, some benefits, they do have dynamic lengths, so instead of having to do a dynamic array and always having to read in things, you can just add and remove as needed, as long as you know the index number. Um, also, um, they are mostly driven off index number, but you can use a key. Um, it's a little bit different than dictionaries, because in dictionaries it's just based off of this key and item association, uh, whereas in collections the key is optional. And the other thing to note is that Microsoft scripting runtime that we had to add in for our dictionaries uh, to be used, we don't have to do that for collections. And so, with that being said, let's go ahead and play with the collections a little bit in the editor. My God, we just got a subroutine for a collection, and I'm going to say dim. Um, let's say dim cars as collection. And so I'm going to have a collection of cars, and we'll say next set cars equal to new collection and so what we've done here is in our first line we're creating a variable through the dim statement we're calling it cars and it's going to be a type collection now collections are objects and so we have to use the set reference the set keyword and so I'm using set my variable name cars equal to what I've got to set it equal to an object reference here I'm setting it equal to a new object reference of type collection and so this will use up a new collection, I've got a brand new collection right now, it doesn't have anything into it in it, so let's add it some values. So I'll say with cars and with, so I don't have cars dot over and over. I'll put dot add, add an item. I will say Mustang, add uh, another item, let's say F-150, there's a truck, not really a car, but it'll do all the same. Uh, add another item, let's say, I don't know. Cooper. Uh, add another item. We'll call it now GMC. They're not necessarily cars, but um, different strings related to, to cars, if you will. And so now that I've got some strings in here, I can say something like, well, um, let's iterate through those. And so we can do something like dim i is integer. And we can say for i equals 1 to cars.count next i and let's debug.print car sub i and so I'll put the, the breakpoint right before the for loop and execute um, you'll see in our watch I'll delete out what was in the watch and put in a cars variable in the watch we've got the strings just like we expect item 1 is Mustang item 2 is F-150 Cooper and GMC and then what cars.count does is that tells us the number of entities in there and so I might be able to add that to the watch at this point yes to cars.count just putting that expression into my watch statement shows that it is 4 so this is just 4 so I pull into 4 print all my cars um, which if I hit F5 will go through and print them all to the immediate window there so I say I don't want to print them all out I just want one of them in there and so I'd have to know say the ID number and so I'll comment this bit out and say, well, I want the third element in the car. And I'll print that to the debug string. So I can do something like that. 
or I'm printing off the third element in the car. Um, this should print off Cooper. And if I hit F5, we see Cooper in the immediate window there. And so that's populating one. I can reference an individual element in the collection if I know the index number, or I can loop through them all with a for loop. Um, you can also remove things in the collection. And so I can do something like, well, I want to remove the item at index four. And so I'll go ahead and put the breakpoint here. Go ahead and delete this out of the watch and run it. So when we get to the statement cars.remove4, we should have four items in the collection, Mustang F-150, Cooper, and GMC. And then as soon as I execute this statement, the GMC should fall off, and we should have a collection now of three items, which is what you're seeing in the, the watch statement as soon as we hit F-8 and went to the end of the sub. And so you can remove items from a collection. You can add items to a collection. Um, you can also use keys. Um, I'll see if I can try to make some keys here. Um, so say I have something like this and I'll just explicitly go main arguments item is this comma key is going to be let's name this one Sally and let's say the keys are the names of the different vehicles Fred Ginger and the GMC is key. So just coming up with some sort of key to relate. And so now that I have keys in place, um, we can say something like, well, give me cars where the key is key. And we can say debug.print car that has a key of Pete. And if I hit oops, that, I get of course Pete because I forgot the reference to the cars in there. And so, let's back run it again. Now I get the GMC because I'm passing the the string Pete into car that's recognizing it as the key and giving me GMC out. And so this is just kind of personal preference. I don't do a whole lot of key association inside of my collections, but you do have the ability to do so. Uh, my personal coding, I spend a lot of times with collections um, instead of variable length arrays. I just find them a little bit more convenient to, to work with as opposed to always having to redim and remember to use preserve to, to keep things in and so forth. And so hopefully this shows you a little bit around with collections. Um, I think they're pretty powerful and hopefully you can put them to good use in your code as well. And so just peeking back at the PowerPoint, we showed how to add an element, we showed iteration, we showed element selection by index, we've removed something by an index, and we also showed a little bit of keys there as well. And so uh, that kind of completes this discussion on collections. And so one thing I'll talk about and kind of tie into the end of this lecture is this idea of uh, custom classes as data structures. And so one of the things you can do, of course, as we've looked at, is use fixed length arrays, dynamic arrays, dictionaries, and now collections. And so let's present a problem and say, okay, in our 40105 class, we want to have a way to group data together at the student level. And so for each one of our students, we have something like an ID number, we've got a first and last name, they'll have a grade for the class. And so how are we going to group these things together? Well, there's multiple scenarios we could look at. Um, one is to have four independent 1D arrays, where student ID, first name, last name, and grade, we could have this as a long integer, we have first and last as strings, grade as a double, um, and then if we kept them all in the same order, we'd always be able to reference an individual student's items through each one of those by knowing their index. Uh, other things we could do is we could have one 2D array and one single D array, right? We could store the ID now as a string, keep it with the strings associated with first and last name, and then have a double for grade. That would be another one where order would tie them together as well. Or we could do something weird with some string work and say, okay, we're going to group this all into one single 1D array, and then we'll just put underscores in between each one of the data points, or data items, if you will. So we have PSU ID, underscore first name, underscore last name, underscore grade, and then we would just know after we get this from the array, we'll have to do some string manipulation in order to get those things out. And so uh, that'd be one way to do it. 
but I would say the best way out of all these would be to create your own custom class. And so here we can create a custom class that defines what a student is, and then we'd have a bunch of student objects. And so that's really what I'm trying to show here, is that I've got an array now of student objects, and each student is student A, student B, student C, student D, student E, and every one of those students would have tied to it a PSU ID number, a first name, a last name, a grade, and that way that's all nice bundled together and a nice neat package for us to be able to reference. Um, we'll talk about this more on in the semester, um, but you can do this with um, cut your own custom classes, and so this is just some details on how it would be set up uh, to use this class as a data structure. Um, we've got a code cl a class module here, so it's done in a class model as opposed to just a regular standard code module. We've got things broken up as fields, as individual variables uh, that are held that describe the uh, class itself. Um, there's a constructor if I need to initialize anything at the beginning. I've got properties which allow me to uh, work from the outside and be able to grab certain things out of the class there. I can control how that interaction works through things called properties. And then I can use that as a skeleton to basically define how each one of these objects is going to work. And so then I can, in my standard coaching module, as you can see a little bit here, I can define a collection of students. And then I'm just adding student objects to the collection. Each one of my student objects, as you can see here, had first name, last name, an ID, and a grade in the class there. And so that's all stuff to come um, as we progress throughout the semester. Uh, so as always, thanks for watching the video. Um, again, uh, this is the, the reference I'm kind of using as some background material for uh, some of my work. I'm also, I think I had a reference down here if you want to check out the MSDN associated with collections as well for straight from Microsoft. So as always, thanks for watching the video. Uh, hopefully this gives you enough information to kind of really take hold of uh, collections and to start using them in your code. Thanks again.